Hi, this is Jeff Klein, editor of Radiographics. And today I'm pleased to have with us Dr. J.D. Legout and Dr. Lauren Alexander from the Department of Radiology at the Mayo Clinic, Florida, authors of one of our featured papers in the current November 2020 issue of Radiographics. Their article is entitled Multimodality Imaging of Abdominal Pelvic Tumors with Venous Invasion. Doctors Legout and Alexander, welcome to one of our two November 2020 podcasts. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. So, JD, we'll begin with you. Can we begin by having you explain how you came about creating this particular exhibit and manuscript that resulted from the exhibit and why the topic is important for radiologists to be aware of? Yeah, so the idea for the education exhibit came from two uh, separate clinical cases that came about in a short period of time. And there were cases that our fellows had struggled with. And so the first was a case of septic thrombophobitis of the main portal vein. And uh, our fellow had mistakenly diagnosed that as tumor thrombus. And then the second was a case of pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor with invasion of the splenic vein that uh, had a second fellow stumped. And so we knew from those experiences that uh, that might be a potential pitfall for our trainees. And when we looked around, um, we couldn't really find any great educational resources that cover that topic in depth. And we know from experience that having a deep understanding of uh, tumors that invade veins, uh, it's not only important for radiologists formulating differential diagnoses, but it's important for um, uh, clinical staging, um, prognostic information, and for surgical planning. <clears throat> and so uh, we thought we had the cases to make a nice exhibit and hopefully the uh, manuscript turned out okay and people find it useful. Yeah, absolutely. So Lauren, let's turn to you. The, the article begins with the various imaging methods and the findings that allow for a confident diagnosis of tumor in vein, which you summarize in table one, which we'll show for our viewers. Uh, can you briefly really review the imaging modalities that are typically employed? And we'll show figure one, which is a nice example of portal vein thrombus on grayscale and color Doppler ultrasound. Yeah, so tumor in vein can be identified with ultrasound, CT, or MRI, as we summarize in the table. The features include an expansile thrombus, and it should have enhancement or color Doppler flow with ultrasound, and similar imaging features to the primary tumor. Those should all be clues that this is malignant rather than bland thrombus. If you can connect the thrombus to the mass, that can be helpful as well. No matter which modality you're using, before you give contrast or liquid Doppler, it should have a heterogeneous either echogenicity or signal intensity, and it shouldn't be homogeneous like bland thrombus typically is. Um, our chillized flow with color Doppler can be hard to prove, but if you really get your technique down and get your text to go back in there, you can find that flow in there. But then it's often useful to go ahead and use CT or MR with contrast to confirm enhancement and stage the primary tumor. We're used to seeing renal cell or hepatocellular carcinoma have that arterial enhancing tumor, and similarly, we'll see heterogeneous arterial enhancement in the thrombus. MRI with subtraction can be especially helpful and motion correction techniques when you have them available really can give you real beautiful subtraction images to confirm this is enhancement and not T1 hyper intense thrombus. So you have a lot of tools, whichever you use best, but you really have to take that extra step sometimes to, to optimize your imaging to prove that it's tumoral rather than acute bland thrombus. Great, thank you. Um, JD, Table two in the article lists the primary abdominal or pelvic veins that are involved by tumor and the common neoplasms that are associated with invasion of each of the four veins. The first of these is the IVC, which as you detail in the article is most often associated with renal cell, hepatocellular and adrenocortical carcinoma, as well as rarely primary venous leiomyosarcoma. Can we discuss renal cell carcinoma in particular and its evaluation as regards venous involvement, and we'll show figure three as an example. Yeah, sure. So with renal cell carcinoma, we really want to get vein invasion right. It's really important for the, the staging of that tumor and for prognostic information. And so we know if we identify tumor thrombus with RCC, we're at least going to be a, T, uh, a stage T3 tumor. And we know right from the get-go that it's going to decrease our five-year uh, disease-free survival to around 50%. And so then we want to think about surgical planning. And so we need to describe the full extent of the tumor thrombus. But not only that, we want to look for areas of potential tumor uh, that has invaded the IVC wall. 
And so what we do is we look for areas where there's gross extent of the tumor beyond the wall, or we can look at the indirect sign of full vessel occlusion, or we have tumor contact 360 degrees uh, with the vein wall. If we see those findings, that'll indicate to our surgeon that they may need to plan for a more complex procedure like an IVC sec resection with reconstruction rather than a more simple uh, tumor thrombectomy. If we look at our figure three, we have a right-sided RCC with vein invasion with tumor thrombus in the right renal vein and extending into the IVC. This case is a nice example of neovascularity where we can actually see the uh, tumor, uh, the vessels that feed and are actually growing within the tumor thrombus. And this is an important finding because it's essentially pathognomonic for a differentiation of tumor thrombus from bland thrombus by imaging. Great, thanks so much. So Lauren, as JD touched on, one of the issues that arises frequently in these situations is the distinction between bland and tumor thrombus. Would you address in the section on the use of MRI, particularly DWI uh, for this particular distinction? Can you discuss this issue and then have you review figure five with us? Yeah, so MRI has the advantage of a lot of different ways to look at thrombus even before you give contrast. And Figure five is a good example comparing malignant thrombus in a patient with HCC with an area of bland thrombus in a different patient. And what we can see with malignant tumor in vein is usually more heterogeneous T2 signal intensity, tends to be more expansile than even acute thrombus. Um, and the typical flow voids that we see with um, T2 weighted imaging. But we need to be careful because acute thrombus can sometimes be expansile as well. So diffusion weighted imaging can be helpful for problem solving as the uh, malignant thrombus will tend to have high signal intensity on high B values. Again, comparing with the known tumor is helpful to confirm that that's real signal and then corresponding restriction on the ADC images. And so all of these findings you can put together uh, before you even give contrast to raise your suspicion that this is malignant. Hey, thanks. So JD, moving to tumor invasion of the portal venous system, you discussed venous invasion due to HCC and intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. And you stated in the article that these malignancies can be challenging to distinguish from one another. Can you discuss the patterns of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma and uh, as seen on MRI, and we'll show figure 15, which illustrates two such patients with intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma? For sure. So these can be challenging cases, but uh, most of the time we'll be able to identify intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma with a high degree of confidence. What we're looking for is a, a mass that has an irregular peripheral rim or arterial hyperenhancement, and then a slow progressive central enhancement on more delayed imaging. And that's in contrast to the more diffuse arterial hyperenhancement and later phase washout and enhancing pseudocapsule that we see with HCC. With respect to the veins, the growth pattern of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma is more commonly that of um, surrounding, encasing, narrowing, and uh, even including venous structures rather than invading. And so we see that in our figure in um, figure A here. We see a right lobe cholangiocarcinoma that's surrounding and narrowing the branches of the right hepatic vein. HCC is much more likely to invade. Uh, and grow within the veins than is cholangiocarcinoma, but we can see this uh, growth pattern occasionally with cholangios. We see an example of that in our second uh, figure here, B, with a large left lobe cholangiocarcinoma that's directly invading and expanding that left portal vein. We associate uh, this growth pattern in cholangiocarcinomas more commonly with larger, later stage, or more centrally located tumors. Great, thanks, JD. So regarding the splanchnic veins, you state that tumor invasion of these veins is most often associated with pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, uh, which for our listeners is the uh, topic of an article in the September 2020 issue by Kana and colleagues. Um, interestingly, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, while obviously more common than neuroendocrine tumors of the pancreas, tend to infiltrate in case and narrow venous structures extrinsically. The next section of the article discusses pelvic venous involvement by tumor, uh, which you note is uncommon, but when this occurs, it usually is attributable to a pelvic sarcoma. Can we review figure 21, which shows an example of this? Yeah, of course. Uh, so uh, invasion of the pelvic veins by tumors, like you said, is uncommon, but when we do identify it, the best bet is usually sarcoma at the top of your differential. If we look at figure 21, we have an example of a uterine leiomyosarcoma. We see in figure A, 
we see a heterogeneously enhancing mass within the uterus. It extends beyond the confines of the uterus growing towards the right pelvic sidewall. And then if we look on the coronal image uh, B, we can see that that uh, extra uterine growth is actually extending into the right internal iliac veins. We see expansile enhancing tumor thrombus within those vessels and then extending um, the cranial into the more proximal uh, venous structures. This growth pattern with leiomyosarcoma is not uncommon. We've seen it about 10 to 20 percent of these uh, aggressive tumors. Thank you very much. So Lauren, in closing, the final section of the paper reviews some of the pitfalls and mimics of venous tumor thrombus. And these include flow artifact, bland thrombus, Kavanagh's transformation, and the pseudolipoma of the IVC that we often see near the diaphragm on the bottom of our chest or upper abdominal uh, CT studies. Uh, any final comments for our listeners as we show this particular table? Yeah, so as uh, JD pointed out at the top of our discussion, some of our goals of this paper was stimulated because we had some cases that were very challenging due to these types of pitfalls. Um, so being aware of these mimics, you can fix as many as you can. So if you can work on your contrast timing, your breath hold, things like that, you can uh, eliminate flow artifacts and save yourself some time on interpretation later if you've got good contrast timing and technique recognizing these common pitfalls like the pseudolipoma of the IVC and not calling that any sort of lesion. Um, we're all more familiar with things like HCC and RCC involving the veins, but knowing that there are these other tumors that can invade into the vein or arise from the vein can help you have a real precise differential diagnosis when it's um, appropriate. And so also recognizing things like pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, not classically thought to invade the vein, but may be more common as we do more imaging of these tumors to, to recognize it. So we really hope this paper brings these things to people's attention, helps develop their differential diagnosis more precisely, and lets us give good reports and good care for our patients. Terrific. Well, thank you. So uh, doctors J.D. Legout and Lauren Alexander, I want to thank you for taking the time today to discuss your paper on multimodality imaging of abdominal pelvic tumors with venous invasion, which appears in the current November 2020 issue of Radiographics. Doctors, thanks so much for the article and thanks for taking the time to speak with me today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much.